I live in it? What? Do I live in it? Yeah. So astounding. Love is an ocean, you can drown me. The sweet embrace, the lovely taste, I taste and see. I'm under grace, the place to be. It means I'll never need an umbrella. I'm cool in the cold, in the hot weather. Whether or never I ever understand I'm a man in the hands of great plans. I stand with faith and a life I never known to touch. And still I saw my clutch, but I'm like, what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? Live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a living to death. So what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? And live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a living to death. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> All right. Good morning. You ready to praise the Lord? Amen. Yes, yeah, sir. We only got two rules when it comes to praising here at MC3. First rule is if you know the song, sing it as loud as you can. Second rule is if you don't know the song, sing it as loud as you can. Because God loves a joyful noise, right? Come on, let's sing this one. I know you know this one. Sing. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Come on, put your hands together like this. Come on. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart.
You can be seated. We're going to get started here uh, on uh, some of our things. We're going to go ahead and have our guys begin to pass the books, if you would. And here's what we do. If you're new with us today, uh, first of all, thank you for coming. We're glad that, that you're here with us. Uh, but if you'll pass those books to the middle and, and sign your name, if you've already been here at MC3, we just want you to put your name in. Just let us. We just want to know you were here. Uh, and then afterwards, if you're on the very end, if, when you get that book in your hand, pass it back if you can. Uh, and uh, then, then you can look and see what the name of the person to your right and to your left are. And so uh, we, we encourage you guys to do that. While they're passing the books, and before we get to offering, because we're going to do offering here in just a few minutes, a couple of things that are happening. You're going to see there's a few people missing. It's because we've got community happening after service today. And so if you don't have any plans for lunch... We would encourage you to stick around. We are going to have a community over at the cafe. There's plenty of seating in the cafe, outside the cafe. And if it's too hot out there, there's also plenty of seating in the gym as well. So we got plenty of space. Today it's fried chicken and uh, potato salad, one of my favorites, and, uh, and all the things that kind of go with that. So, um, and if you, if you went, oh man, I forgot, I didn't bring any cash don't worry about it. You come and eat, and we're going to have a good time. If, if, uh, you, brought a, if you brought a guest with you today, uh, uh, then, then you and them, they you know, definitely don't pay, okay? So um, you just go right there, eat some fried chicken, and have a great time. Uh, I always joke that I became a minister just for the fried chicken, and so hopefully you'll enjoy that as well. So uh, please, if you don't have any plans, if you go, I don't know where we're going to go, uh, just come and stick with us. We're going to have a great time. It's just over the, the cafe, by the way, if you don't know your way around the campus because it's really super huge. The blue awning outside, when you walk outside, you see a blue awning, that's the cafe. So if you haven't seen the cafe, you at least need to go and check it out. It's a neat, neat place that our students hang out, that sort of thing. So encourage you afterwards uh, to hang out with us for community. Also, too, this Wednesday, uh, we are going to have our VBS Palooza. You may look over here uh, to my right, your left, and my left, and your right. You're going to see some oddities sitting out. You're going, what are, what are those things? These are some of our decorations from VBSs in the past. And so we, we, if, you, if you are new with us, one of the, the staples that, uh, that has kind of made who we are uh, and who we will be in the future is VBS. Uh, because of some of the changes we've made and, and just because of, for some of you who work so hard, uh, we didn't want to wear you all out. Uh, and so we are going to do a one-night VBS and just kind of celebrate what God has done. Uh, and kind of catch our breath, and then work towards next year as we hop into uh, VBS, uh, because we want to make sure uh, that we reach the one who needs Jesus in our community, and because of that, VBS is huge. VBS is always interesting to me, because it's the one event that parents drop off their kids knowing that they'll get the gospel, and so we, um, Mount Carmel has done a phenomenal job with that in the past, uh, and as we move forward as MC3, we want to make sure that we continue that. Uh, and there's numerous, numerous kids throughout our community that have been impacted by VBS. Uh, and so we just want to celebrate that, celebrate what God has done through us. We didn't do it, but God has done it through us, and we want to celebrate that. So this Wednesday, here's the deal. We want you to be here. If you don't normally come on Wednesday, you need to come this Wednesday, okay? We're going to have, uh, have Chick-fil-A, uh, and so we, we just need you to stop the connections counter or call into the office this week and say, hey, I'm coming, uh, save me a Chick-fil-A sandwich. That way we make sure we got a plenty, of, plenty of food. But here's the thing, all of us, kids, students, us bigger kids uh, like me, we're going to go through VBS too. And so we're going to sing the songs, uh, we're going to go and do crafts together. I haven't done crafts 
forever. And so uh, if you want to bring uh, some, some, your, some gloves in case you, you get a, a finger, uh, get, a, get a paper cut or something like that, please feel free to do so. We're going to go. We're going to do crafts together. Uh, we're going to go and, uh, into the amphitheater. Bobby Reese has got something special planned for us when it comes to a Bible story. It's going to be, it's going to be phenomenal. It's going to be great. So we want you to come back here uh, on Wednesday and be a part of it. You're going to see it up on the screen. Uh, we'll talk about it here in just a little bit, but we'll make sure that you know all that is coming. And also, too, last thing before I switched over and let the guys come and, and we'll pray for offering here in just a second. But uh, last thing is just to let you know uh, as a church that we have a contract on the building. Uh, we're not selling the church, right? Because uh, the church is the church no matter where we go. Uh, but we have a contract on the building, which is kind of exciting. So your job is to just to pray that the Lord continue to lead us, uh, continue to open the doors, and we're going to continue to walk through all these things. It's kind of been step by step by step. It's interesting. This past week, I was meeting uh, with the guy that I meet with, Richie, and so we were talking about things and how we were looking at Scripture and how the Lord doesn't always, He doesn't give us the entire plan. He just gives us the bits and pieces. Yeah. And we looked at Philip, where Philip is, he goes to Samaria, and he's got ministry going on there, then God calls him to go to Ethiopia, he doesn't know why, he just, or to, to go down south to meet an Ethiopian, he doesn't know why, he just goes, and when he gets there, God says, go stand near that chariot, he goes, okay, and so he stands near the chariot, and it's at that point in time, he gets in a conversation with an Ethiopian and leads him to Jesus, and as most uh, uh, scholars believe, most theologians uh, believe that that one uh, uh, person right there uh, is responsible for all of the Ethiopians to know who Jesus is. Pretty incredible when you think about mm -hmm. it. Uh, and, but it's one step at a time. Mm -hmm. And so we're just kind of walking through the doors uh, as a church, and God's just kind of leading us. You know, where does this go from here? I don't know. This will be kind of exciting. It's kind of fun to see where God is bringing us. But your, your job is just to pray, Lord, lead us, guide us, show us what, what happens Next, we're going to have a, it's going to be an awesome ride, so buckle your seatbelts. We're going to have a lot of fun with that, okay? Uh, I'm going to pray for an offering here in a second as the guys come to, uh, to, to, uh, uh, to take the offering up. Uh, and so let's pray, and then afterwards you're going to check out all the other things that are happening here at MC3 up on the video. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. Yeah, you are great, and you are mighty, and you are awesome. Father, we give you praise for who you are. Father, I thank you for right now. Uh, our students are serving, are getting ready to serve us. Uh, some, many of them are in, uh, in the cafe getting things ready, getting things prepared and set up uh, to serve uh, your body. Father, I thank you for the children's ministry and for students that are downstairs there as well that are working with our kids and teaching them and leading them to you, Father God. Lord, I give you thanks and I give you praise for them. Lord, I thank you uh, for all those that work so hard to serve here today. Those that got here early, those that have been shaking hands, those that have been singing, the, all, the, all the aspects of things, Father. Lord, these, these are our offerings up to you. And Father, we pray that you would bless us as we give to you, as we give from the bounty that you've given us. Father, we pray that you would bless the gift and bless the giver, Lord God, that we would give what you have asked us to give today. And so, Father, we pray for that. It's in Jesus' powerful name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Check out these things as we take up our offering. Welcome to MC3 Church. We're so happy you've chosen to worship with us today. If you're visiting us for the first time, we encourage you to get involved in today's service. Relax and enjoy the experience. Here's what's happening at MC3 Church in June. VBS Palooza is coming up. The fun will begin on Wednesday, June 6 at 6 p.m. Some of the fun will include a contest to see who has the oldest Vacation Bible School t-shirt. Again, the event is scheduled for June 6 beginning at 6 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Dinner will be catered by Chick-fil-A. Please sign up at the Connections counter. Have you heard about Come and See? Come and See is geared to help MC3 fulfill its vision to reach the one who needs Christ. We are asking every single member of our church to invite a guest, someone who needs to come and see what Jesus is all about. Your guest will be able to attend our community lunch for free immediately following the worship service. To ensure the proper accommodations are met, such as food and beverages, please sign up in advance at the Connections counter. For the third straight year, MC3 will provide lunches to needy children in our community during the summer recess from school. Donations needed are such things as juice boxes, small bottled water, salty snacks, 
individual chips, popcorn, cheese crackers, and a number of different other items. Donations can be dropped off at the Connections counter. There's still some time left to sign up for North Georgia Christian Camp. You can see the NGCCC's summer camp schedule and sign up at christiancamp.net forward slash summer camps. Again, that's christiancamp.net forward slash summer camps. Are you following us on Facebook? If not, please take a moment now and follow us at MC3 Church on Facebook. That's facebook.com forward slash MC3, three spelled out, church. That's facebook.com forward slash MC3, three spelled out, church. Well, that concludes today's announcements. We hope you enjoy today's service and look forward to seeing you real soon. All right. Well, hey, um, listen, um, I want to, um, last week, uh, uh, Nina was baptized into Christ. And so uh, we're super excited about that. One of the things... One of the things we weren't able to do is, uh, because they weren't in just yet, uh, was to give Nina her baptism t-shirt. Uh, and so she gets to sport this around. And our hope is that when people ask her, what's that all about? She goes, that's best for me being baptized. And so this is for you. It's got MC3 on the back. That's for you. If you'll hold that right there. And if you'll give your mom. And, and this, is for, this is for those uh, that are baptized. We, we're not going to sell these. these we're going to keep these. Uh, close to our chest, uh, but these are for those that are baptized and uh, those uh, that are baptizers, and so this is for your mom and dad because they baptize you, okay? So let's give her a hand, and we praise God. We praise God for, uh, uh, for her desire to give her life to Christ. Remember, it's all about reaching the one who needs Jesus in our community, and I know it's just a t-shirt, but yet nonetheless, our hope is that she's wearing that t-shirt as, as uh, Dana and Jerry are wearing that t-shirt that will spark conversation, and people go, you know what, maybe I need to make that same, uh, that, same, that same decision as well. So, Nina, we are so proud of you. Awesome job. Way to go. Hey, listen, we're going to go ahead and worship. If you would, stand up, and let's continue in worship. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Yes, you're worthy, God. Amen. You're so worthy, Lord.
The serpent. Snake. Was the savviest of all of the creatures in the creator's perfect planet. The reptile surveyed the scene with keen snake eyes. Streetwise, armed with an arsenal of plausible lies, he slithered up to Eve, the woman, from her blind side, preserving the element of surprise. And he said, Hello, child. How was your day? I overheard your conversation. I just had one simple question. Exactly what did the creator say? That thing about the tree, the evil and the good, how do you know that you understood? Did he really say what you think you heard? Maybe your mind twisted up the words. Did he say hands off all the plants? Don't look, don't touch, don't taste. What a waste that would be. Eve, the woman, pointed out the tree with the taboo. The tree of the knowing, the good and evil too. She told the snake that God had made it drop dead clear that everything else was free, every other tree. But if they took one tiny taste of the fruit of this particular one, they would absolutely, positively crash and burn. said the snake, faking genuine concern. The deity's afraid of what you're gonna learn. With just one bite, you be just like him. Eyes wide open, knowing the heights of what humans can do, knowing the depths, the despicable too. God would have no tactical advantage over you. You and your man could have the run of the place, total control over the food you eat, the life you live, the path you choose. With just one small bite, you could gain the whole green world. And that means that God of yours would lose. And Eve walked closer and closer to the tree. She sniffed and felt the fruit against her cheek. Totally wise, with open eyes, she said. What's wrong with that? Maybe my man and I were born for this. Born to know, born to control, born to rule. She swallowed hard, and it was done. She gave some to her covenant partner, Adam. He opened his mouth and gobbled it down, and the universe was silent. It was the cool part of the day, and God was walking, walking through the land he made. His ecosystem so magnificently put together, about to erode, about to implode before his sad and timeless eyes. He took one long last look and kiss the innocence goodbye adam where you hiding son eve girl what have you done Around. It's broken now. Under a curse. From bad to worse. Now your eyes.
eyes are wise and clear. Now you know shame. Now you know fear. Now you know you're naked. Now you run for cover. Well, here's what's gonna happen. Life will be shorter. Pain will be greater. Work will be harder. Grinding it out by the sweat on your brow, the blood on your hands. Eve and Adam, even the bond you have will now be strained, slightly off, distorted, reframed. And as for you, reptile snake, Adam will crush your head. You will strike and bite his heel. You will feel the weight of the consequences of what you've done for eons. He looked them in the eye with a sigh. It's broken now, he said. And the serpent, he just smiled. And so one day, one day God will wipe that smile off his face, right? But until then... This is the world that we've been born into, and this is the world that these four people that we'll be talking about over the next few weeks, as we launch into a series that we have just are calling the bad boys of the Bible, we're going to look at four different bad boys uh, and see how they were able to navigate this broken world. Today, we're going to be talking about Cain and Abel, which is interesting because it seemed that the brokenness went from zero to 60 really, really fast, because it's after this event. The next thing we read about in Scripture is in Genesis chapter 4, our, our passage for today. And we're going to see that the very first thing that happens, the very first thing that takes place in this broken world now, is murder of all things. Absolutely incredible. And so we're going to look at, at four uh, people in the Bible, two of, which, two of which will come back to the Father and two will not. Our hope is, as we do this case study on these four different individuals from Scripture, that we will also look at ourselves because in many ways, their story is our story. Their story is our story. If we are honest with ourselves, we haven't ventured much beyond what some of these four men do in their life. The difference is that two of them come back to the Lord and follow him and two do not. And so today, we're going to kind of unpack all this and see what we're looking at today. So if you would, if you have your scriptures, turn it, if you would, to Genesis chapter 4, uh, very, very beginning of the Bible. Uh, Genesis is the first, first book. Uh, so Genesis chapter 4, we're going to start in verse 1, and we're going to look at these stories. As you're turning to Genesis chapter 4, we're going to look at the life of Cain. Uh, now, a lot of times we'll look at, at Abel. In fact, if you were to read Hebrews chapter 11, which we'll read here in just a little bit, you'll see Abel highlighted, but Cain not so much. Cain is one of those bad boys of the Bible. In fact, we might even say, uh, if you kind of excuse Adam a little bit uh, and Eve for, for what they did in the garden, Cain is our first bad apple, so to speak, if you will. Uh, he's the first one that you look at and go, whoa, wait a minute, his life ends up becoming something that, um, that will uh, impact the entire world. Because when he begins with murder, murdering his brother Abel, we find that what happens very, very quickly through Scripture from Genesis 4 all the way to Genesis chapter 6 is that murder becomes the order of the day. Violence floods the entire world. And so there is something that happens uh, within Cain, uh, as he, uh, as he uh, pulls away from the Lord and begins to walk away from him, that the rest of the world seems to follow. It's just very, very interesting. And so, if you have your scriptures, we're going to look at Genesis chapter 4. These are true stories. These are true stories from scripture. God uh, does not want us uh, to um, uh, stay away from sin because he wants to mess with us or because he wants to ruin our fun or because he wants to make sure that we do exactly what he wants us to do. God makes, he, he puts these little parameters, guardrails in place to keep us from sin so that we can keep from all the pain and all the sorrow and all the things that happen because there are some spiritual IEDs that are around and if we're not careful, 
we will step into them. In fact, it's interesting, we'll read about this. God tells Cain that sin is crouching at his door. God points out the spiritual IED that's right outside, and he doesn't pay any attention to that. And so we're going to kind of look at this and see how can we avoid these pitfalls? How can we avoid these, these landmines that are out in our society? And how can we watch out for those things? Because sin is not only crouching at Cain's door, but it's also crouching at our door as well. And we have to be very, very careful. So there's a lot of things here for us to learn because we can go from paradise to pain pretty, pretty quickly if we're not, not careful. So uh, Genesis chapter 4, starting in verse 1, here's what it says. It says, Adam made love to his wife, Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I've brought forth a man. And later she gave birth to, her bro- to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept the flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked on favor with Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. And so Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. And then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast. If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. You must rule over it. So the question is, how do we keep, how do we keep from giving in to the sin that's around us? And if you don't think that sin isn't around you, all we have to do is turn on the TV, get on the internet, go out and talk to people out of the neighborhood, and you're going to find really quickly that sin is everywhere, pervasive. How do we avoid giving in to the temptation that's all around us? How do, we, how do we do that? Well, the first thing that we see, and the first thing that we want you to know, is that we need to be faithful. We, in order for us to keep from giving in to sin, we need to be faithful to God. Be faithful to God. Our faith in God can keep us from sin. In Hebrews chapter 11, like I was talking about earlier, verse 4, the writer of Hebrews gives us a really quick few verses on Abel. This is what it says. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offering. And by faith... Abel still speaks, even even though he is dead. So let's take a closer look in Genesis 4 and see why the faith of Abel seemed to be uh, so pervasive. Why was was that a, a, a centerpiece to keep Abel from sin? And why did Cain not have faith Uh, in the Lord. Well, in verses 3 and 4, this is what it says. And this is maybe, if you've got your own Bible with you, this is one to underline, one to highlight. Uh, If not, write it down, jot it down, keep it in your brain. This is something very interesting. Once you look at this, it says, in the course of time, Cain brought, and here it is, some of the fruits of the soil as an offering. So I would underline, personally, in my Bible, I would underline some of the fruits of the soil. Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering. Now, once you look at his offering, this is one to underline as well. He brings fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. So what what was it about Cain's offering that God didn't like? Does Does God not want vegetables? God says, I don't want vegetables, I don't want fruit. Does, is, that, is that what it is? But the fact that Abel brought uh, fat portions from, uh, from some of his, his flock, that he brought some of the, the firstborn, that he had, it was a blood sacrifice. Was that the case? Well, the Hebrew word for offering here is minha, and it's kind of a, a dedication sacrifice. So it's not a sin sacrifice. It's not a, it's not a blood sacrifice that was required. So it doesn't seem to be that God didn't want the vegetables as opposed to an animal from the flock. But so there was something else going on here. So if it wasn't the gift that displeased God, there had to be something in the giver that displeased God. 
But let's look at the text just a little bit here, because it says with Cain, a little bit more closely, that some of the fruit, he brought some of the fruits of the soil, while Abel brought fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. So our offering to God is a picture, by the way, of what our hearts look like. And so today, when you are serving out front or wherever, that's a picture of what your heart looks like to God. So if you were in your car today driving up here and you're saying, man, I can't believe i got to go serve today. Why is it my day? It's always my day. I seem to be the only one up there serving. Boy, if I didn't show up, they'd be in real trouble. But I'm going to come up. I'm going to go ahead and gonna do it because I signed up for it, and I'll go ahead and do it. If that was your heart, then that's, and that's your offering. That's what God sees. If, you're, if, if someone's up here singing today going, okay, I'll sing, but I, I, don't, I don't like these songs, I don't like the tune, I don't like the music, but I'll sing just because we're supposed to sing, it's supposed to smile, and it's supposed to look good on Sunday morning. If that's the offering you bring, that's a picture of your heart that you have. Even, even in, in, in our own monetary offerings, if we put something in the plate going, I can't believe I'm, I, I'm doing this, I can't believe I'm, I'm giving this, I, 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 I shouldn't then that's a picture of the heart that you bring to your offering. God will look at our hearts before he ever looks at the offering. Someone put it like this, God inspects the giver before he ever inspects the gift. God inspects the giver before he ever inspects the gift. I guess that's why God called Ananias and Sapphira on what they were doing. They were bringing their offering, but it wasn't their offering. They really, they really were offering some of. And God saw their heart, and God called them on it, and uh, they paid for their lives with it. If you remember in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, God schools Samuel, the prophet, on what he looks at. And you see, God doesn't look on the outward appearance. And so today, if you're sitting here going, I don't know if I'm dressed appropriately. I don't know, you know, I don't, I don't know if that's, let me tell you something. God looks at the heart, doesn't look at what we're wearing doesn't look on the outside. He looks at what's on the inside. And so my hope is that, in, that here at MC3, we're going to have somebody wearing a, a suit and a tie and someone wearing jeans and someone wearing whatever so that when someone walks in, they don't feel out of place, right? So they can focus on God instead of focusing on what's on the outside. But let me listen to what God tells Samuel in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. He says this, The Lord does not look on, on the things that people look at. People look at the outward appearance. But God looks at the heart. God looks at the heart. So Cain brings some of the fruits of his labor. But Abel, look what Abel does. Abel brings the fat portions. Abel brings the better portions. The better portions. The fat portions. And he brings some of the firstborn of his flock. And this is where the faith of Abel comes in. Because when you give the firstborn, you're not guaranteeing there's a secondborn. You're not guaranteeing that, that, there's, that, that the animals are going to produce after that. When you give the firstborn, that may be all that you'll have. And so Abel gives, Abel gives the best, and he gives the first, and he puts his faith and trust in God, figuring that God's going to take care of. And so here's where the faith comes in. Here's where the faith of Abel comes in, which begs the question, am I faithful To give God my best. Am I faithful to give God my best? Totally trusting in him that he'll do everything he's asked or everything we've asked him to, that he'll do everything that he's called us to. You know, here at MC3, we've said, okay, God, if you're in charge, then okay, we'll we'll, we'll do what what, what you want us to do. We're going to put money into ministry and we're going to put money into missions. So that means... This building is going to have to be sold, so God, you're going to have to take care of that. We can't, we can't manufacture that. You're going to have to do it. And so, step by step, the Lord's going to take care of it. We're going to trust that he's going to take care of it and do it. And so we just got to put our trust in him. Okay, God, you got it. You do your part, we'll do ours. We'll show up faithfully every week. We'll serve, we'll give, we'll do what you ask us to do with a joyful and cheerful heart because that's what we want to offer to God. But God, you're going to have to do your part. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. He can do whatever he wants. He could sell this place in just like that. Uh, But he knows what's best, so we're going to trust him. 
So when, when, uh, when he does finally sell this building, we're going to have to trust him that he's got a place for us. We may look and go, I don't know where, I, I, I don't know where it's going to be. We, we, put, we, we put a tight box on the Lord. God, here you go. We went you know, from, from 29 to 78 to Rockbridge to Killian Hill. Go, Lord, find us something. And we may look at that. If some of you know this area, go, good grief, that's almost impossible. But nothing's impossible with God. He's got it covered. We're just going to let him take care of that. We're just going to continue to be faithful, continue to do what God has called us to do. So the question is, am I faithful to give God my best, trusting totally in him? Because it's when we don't totally trust in him that we try to circumvent and we try to take the place of God, and that's where we get into trouble. And so, in order for us to stay away from sin, from making some missteps, from from being God ourselves and say, God, here, let me help you out. You just take, just go ahead and sit in the back of the, of the bus, God. I'll go ahead and drive because it's, I think I know best where we need to go. In order to prevent from doing that, we have to put our faith in him. And so to, to make sure that we stay out of sin, to stay away from sin, from giving in to the temptation of sin, we need to be faithful. Faithful to God, giving him the best of who we are, of all that we are, inside and outside. We also need to be alert. We also need to be alert. Stay frosty, right? Being, being, uh, watching out for sin. Making sure that we're not falling, falling into it. Make sure that we're not doing anything to, to jump into sin. Look at what God says in Genesis chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, as he speaks directly to Cain. Listen to this. He says, then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? You ever had a downcast face? Maybe some of you today walked in with a downcast face. Yeah. You know, sometimes you can tell when somebody's not, not doing so well, not feeling so well. Uh, their face is downcast. Maybe you can tell when someone's angry uh, and you don't know what to do about it. That's, that's his face. God says, why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? I think that goes back to his offering. If you do what is, if you got your heart right, won't you be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door and desires to have you, but you must rule over it. And so there, there was something already at work at Cain's heart before he ever brought his offering. Something was already there. Sin was already at work. Sin was hanging around, peering in the window, watching him on the street corner, taking note of, 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 of Cain. And Cain maybe cozied up to it just a little bit. Maybe got a little angry with Abel because it seemed like maybe perhaps Abel was always blessed and he wasn't. And so what is it about, about Abel? And how come God doesn't love me as much as he loves him? And how come he doesn't give me what he gives, gives him? And who knows? But for some reason, his heart wasn't right leading up to all of this. Sin was crouching at his door. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and 9, the apostle warns the first century believers and warns us by saying this, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith. There's faith again. Because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kinds of suffering. I was watching the other day on the internet uh, uh, just because of this. I thought, I want to check this out and just kind of uh, uh, see this. So I got on YouTube and I checked out, you know, uh, 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 you know when lions attack, that sort of thing. And I, I come across this, this video uh, of this, uh, this group that was out uh, taking pictures and, and that sort of thing. And, of course, you know, when they're out on safari, you don't mess with nature. You just let nature let nature take its course. Uh, and so these two male lions spotted this water buffalo and its little calf uh, just kind of eating pleasantly out in, out, in the, out in the wilderness. And those lions got down, crouched down, and they snuck into some tall grass. In fact, from the, vi- from the angle of the video, you couldn't hardly see the, the, the lions. In fact, uh, the color of the lions seemed to blend in with the grass. And that water buffalo and its little calf came walking along, and, and it came walking by the grass and didn't even notice the lions that were just probably 15 feet away from it. And then as they passed by and as they were walking away, the lions pounced from the backside and grabbed onto uh, the, the, the mom buffalo, and uh, they... Uh, proceeded to have buffalo burgers after that. Um, 
And it was, it was incredible to watch this take place. And if you begin to look at that and look at sin and how sin does, it watches, it waits for just the right moment to pounce. Sin is crouching at your door, Cain. Be careful. Be careful. If, you don't, if, you don't, if you're not careful, if you're not alert, it'll come up behind you and grab onto you and have Cain burger. You know, it's, it's there. It's, it'll jump all over you. And so, be careful. Sin is crouching at every click on the internet. Sin is crouching uh, at every word that we post on Facebook. Sin is crouching with every conversation that we have where we say, well, I'm not supposed to tell anybody, but let me tell you what happened the other day. Sin is crouching at our door. It desires, desires to have us. It desires to attack us. It desires to ruin us. It desires to destroy us. And so Cain is warned by God, but he doesn't heed the warning. Which reminds us, when we don't heed the warning, when we get into temptation, when we fall into sin or we jump headlong into it, whichever way you want to, want to look at it, that we need to be repentant. One of the ways to keep from giving into sin isn't just being faithful, and it's not just being alert, but it, even afterward, we need to be repentant. We need to be repentant of the sin that's around us. I want you to look at verse 8 through 16. This is, this is, what follows here is extremely tragic. It's extremely tragic. Because it didn't have to be this way. Uh, but Cain chose this way. It says here in verse 8, Now Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out to the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. I, you know, it always amazes me that Abel didn't know what was going on. Cain, hey, why don't you come out and check these uh, cauliflower I've been growing. Man, these are awesome cauliflower out there. And then all of a sudden, bam, you know, well, he's got his back turned. Uh, he didn't even know what hit him. And so Cain says, hey, come on out here, and Cain kills his brother. God knew, God knew uh, this was, this is just the way, this is just the way that God works. I want us to listen to this, because in verse 9, after he kills his brother, listen to what God says. Then the Lord said to Cain, where's your brother Abel? Where's your brother Abel? See, God knew, but it's just the way the Lord works. He's giving Cain an opportunity to repent. He's given an opportunity to confess and repent. And Cain does not, does not buy that, does not do that, and stays in his sin. I think it's incredible that God, even in that moment, the first, the first murder. I mean, I don't know what the other sins were like uh, that they were committing after the fall, but this is the first murder. And like I said before, from this point on, the world bec become more and more and more violent. If you remember, before the flood, before the flood came, the scriptures talk about the violence that was on the earth. In many ways, we look at what happened in Noah's day, before the flood, and we look at our day, and it gets to be same, same. What do we always see? We see murders. We, see, we, 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 I, we, we hear about them so much so that they become passe. Some of you who, are, who may have, may have uh, lived a little longer than, uh, than, than some of us, uh, how long ago has it been since you remember maybe hearing, maybe for the first time, of someone getting killed and it's kind of shocking you, you know? Like it didn't happen much, and now it seems like it happens all the time to the point where we're like, okay, whatever. Even, even school shootings, even school shootings, we get, you kind of get to the point where like, okay, I've, I've eh, I heard it before, you know? Oh, only five or only six get shot okay that's that's nothing I mean it, that kind of that's kind of the way that we approach this because it's just so pervasive and so all around us and here God with all of that ahead God knows it's going to be ahead God still takes the time pushes pause and comes to Cain and says Cain so where's your brother where's your brother at he gives him the opportunity to repent God is absolutely incredible his love is much higher than ours would be. His love is much deeper than ours ever could be. And he wants to give Cain an opportunity uh, in his grace and his mercy to repent. And Cain doesn't take that opportunity. And here's, in fact, Cain says this. He says, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? See, my mom would call that a smart mouth. My mom would call that a smart mouth. Uh, Cain, Cain knows what's going on, but he's not going to tell God. And he smarts off to God. And it kind of reminds us of this, that when we sin, we have two choices afterwards. 
we can soften our heart towards God and repent, confess, and go before him and say, Lord, I've, I have totally messed up. Or we can have a hard heart and we can walk away and even hold on to that sin. There's two choices. Cain chooses the latter. He chooses to harden his heart toward God. He chooses to think about himself. He chooses not to repent. Chooses, he doesn't choose to accept God's grace, but chooses to hold on to what, what he's done. And so the Lord shares with Cain the results of his sin. He says in verse 10, the Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. And now you're under a curse, driven from the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. And when you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you, and you'll be a restless wanderer on the earth. And I think in order for us, in order for us to avoid sin, in order for us to stay away from sin, even, even after the faith that we put in God, and even after uh, being alert to it, but once we, once we jump into it, we have, we have to be repentant. We have to go back to God and say, God, I've, I've messed up. I've messed up. You know, great, God's grace is always there for us. You know, Paul says, you know, should, we, should we go on sinning so that grace may increase? Of course, Paul says, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. But we know that God's grace is there. So we don't want to abuse it because if we abuse God's grace and we cozy up to sin too much, eventually, you know what we do? We stop asking for forgiveness. We stop seeing our sin as sin. And we just do whatever we want it happens today. In fact, churches have embraced certain aspects of sin. They've embraced it uh, and, have, and have forgotten that we're, we're trying to call people to stay away from sin because sin will kill, steal, and destroy our lives. Finally, we need to make sure that we're accountable. I think one of the ways for us to stay away from sin, to keep from giving in to sin, is to be accountable to someone. Sin is plutonium. It's, it's, it's like walking around with a ticking time bomb. It's like walking around with, a, with an IED that hadn't been planted yet. And you're like, I don't know what to do with this. This thing could go off any minute. And that's exactly right. And so we have to, we have to be accountable for someone to point out ahead of us. Hey, be careful of that. Hey, watch out for that. In fact, Paul encourages the, the believers in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. He says this, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as, in fact, you are doing. And so we need to make sure that we encourage one another and that we're accountable to those that are around us. I don't, maybe you remember this from years, a couple years ago. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what year this happened, but uh, many years ago, uh, a baseball player by the name of Ar Armando Galarraga of the Detroit Tigers uh, was pitching a perfect game. In fact, he was down to the last out. And the, guy, and the runner had hit the ball, and the, it was a bang-bang play, and the umpire at first base called the guy safe. One out away from the perfect game, uh, something that doesn't happen very much in baseball at all and may have never happened to Galarraga ever to him ever again. And yet the first baseman, the first base uh, uh, umpire, calls the guy safe. It wasn't until after the game when they were reviewing uh, all the things. This is before, uh, before uh, the uh, instant replay went on in baseball, which is absolutely annoying, by the way. Uh, but nonetheless, um, but it was after all that that they looked and they said they, they saw that absolutely the guy was out, bar none, and that the umpire had just simply blown the call. His name was Jim Joyce. And Jim Joyce, after, and when he, after the game, after he saw what had happened, after he saw his mistake, you know what he did? And he was accountable. He felt accountable to the people around him, felt accountable to Galarraga. He went and, and apologized uh, to Galarraga, went to him and said, I'm so sorry, I blew, I blew your uh, perfect game. I totally missed the call, uh, uh, and, uh, and you should have had that perfect game. Do you know what Galarraga did in, a, in accountability uh, to, to Jim Joyce? You know what he did? Uh, he said, Don't, that's okay. He forgave him. He said, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody's human. And he forgave him of that. We need to make sure that we are accountable to those around us. That we, that we are humble enough, soft-hearted enough to say, hey, listen, I need your help in this. I need, you to, I need you to forgive me. I need you to watch out for me. I need, you, I need a spotter. I need someone pointing out for me where the enemy's at. 
I need someone who's up ahead saying, hey, watch out for that. Here's a landmine here. Here's an IED here. Be careful because spiritually you can get blown up right here. That's what we need. We need someone who will surround us, who will walk with us, who will be with us, who will watch over us. And it's amazing. It's an amazing picture that we see in all of Scripture uh, in, in, in the, the, the story of the prodigal son, of how God, in his grace, forgives our faults, he forgives our failures, and he watches over us. And so we've got to be faithful to God. If we're going to watch out for sin, if we're going to uh, stay away from sin, we need to take a lesson from Cain, and we need to be faithful. You know, Cain was not faithful to God. He didn't put his faith, his trust in God. We need to put our faith and our trust in God. We also need to be alert. Cain was warned, but he didn't do anything about it. He didn't stay alert. He didn't stay frosty. In fact, he almost seemed to jump headlong into and already had planned what he was going to do to his brother. And we need to make sure that we're accountable. You know, it's interesting that Cain's accountability partner (laughs) was God the Father. His accountability partner was God, and he chose not to listen. He chose not to listen to what God had said to him. And so this is the world that we live in. This is the world that, we, that we're around. Sin is everywhere, and if we're not careful, the stories of these men that we're going to talk about over the next few weeks, they could be our stories. They could be our stories. That smile that Satan had on his face, that smirk, that he had at the very very beginning of time. That's what he has. Every time we jump into sin, every time we fall into sin, every time he sets a trap and we seem to fall headlong into it, that's, that smile is always on his face. But we're going to take heart because we know that one day Jesus will wipe that smile off his face. And we don't have to look any further to know that that's, that's already happened in many ways because of the cross. In my Bible study, personal Bible study, I'm in Revelation, and in Revelation uh, chapter 12, it talks about it talks about how Satan comes down to earth in, the, in a fury because the Scripture says he knows his time is short. He knows his time is short. How does he know his time is short? It's because of the cross, because of what Jesus did. He defeated, he defeated Satan at the cross. It sounds kind of odd, doesn't it? That uh, in, in many ways, maybe some of you were taught that, that, that Satan was the one that put Jesus on the cross. No, it was Jesus that we see all throughout Scripture was running to the cross. All the way from Genesis, all the way to Revelation, it talks about Jesus going to the cross. Jesus was going to die. That's how he was going to crush Satan's head. And so today, we're getting ready to uh, go to these tables to take of communion, to pick up these emblems that remind us, to remind us of the victory that Jesus has won. Now you may think, I don't know if I'm worthy or not to take this communion because I've like Cain have sinned. I've like Cain have, have jumped headlong. I haven't listened. I haven't been alert. Listen, it doesn't matter. There's no sin too great. There's nothing that you have done that God doesn't know about, nor was he anticipating when he went to the cross. And so if you think you've done something that's so far, too great that God can't forgive, you're wrong. And that's a message from the enemy. It's a message from Satan. He's whispering in your ear with a smile that God can never forgive you, that God can never, never, never accept you, that God will never accept you back. That's hogwash. Because 2,000 years ago, Jesus went to the cross specifically so you and I could have a relationship with him. So don't let this time pass you by today. Don't let this time pass you by where you take up of the bread and of the cup. That bread represents his body and the cup that represents his blood. His blood that was poured out for us. He was the perfect sacrifice. The perfect lamb of God. And he came to the cross just for you and me. So don't let this time pass you by. And let me encourage you. If, uh, if this week's been rough... Uh, if this week uh, you've, 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 uh, you've stepped on one of those spiritual landmines, if this week uh, you feel like, man, I have blown it this week, it's okay. Take those emblems and go before the Lord and offer up your confession to him, not to us, but to him, and repent. That's, I, that's just the beauty of why we do the altars the way we do. 
There is something humbling about getting on our knees before God and saying, God, I have messed up. You know what I've done, and I'm just coming to repent of my sins. And you know what God does? He opens up his arms wide to us. He will always welcome us home. He did, if he was going to do it for Cain, he'll do it for us. So let me encourage you. Don't let this time pass you by. And if you need someone to pray with you today, if you need someone just to simply walk alongside you, maybe, maybe not necessarily be accountable today, maybe not even share all your sins, but just say, hey, listen, I just need you to pray for me. You know, you don't have to tell them what. Just ask them, hey, would you pray for me? They'll be, they're willing to pray with you today. I'll be right down front. I would love to pray with you. And here's the cool thing about the way we do what we do. There's motion in the room already. Nobody's going to pay attention to what's going on here. Nobody's going to look at you and go, oh, I wonder what they're talking about. I guess they had a really bad week. Huh? Nobody's going to do that. Nobody's going to do that. So let me encourage you. Don't let this time pass you by where you get in your car and you go, man, I wish I would have. Oh, I should have. I could have. You can't, you can't tell me that Cain wasn't doing that as he walks away from his family, as he walks away from the presence of God, never to return. Never to return to the presence of God. Don't walk away today going, oh, I wish I would have. I wish I could have. I should have. Don't let that be you. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. You are great. You are mighty. You are awesome. Lord, you are powerful. There, Lord, there's none, like, there's none like you. No one like you. No one like you that would, in your perfection, in your glory, in your power, that you would lay all that down and go to the cross and die a painful death for us, paying for our sins, not yours. You had none. You've never had any sin, but you paid for ours. Father, we thank you. Thank you for opening your arms wide to us. And today, we just pray that you would receive us, Lord God, as we humbly come before you, as we bow our hearts and bow our heads and even, even some of us bow on our knees to you, Father God. Lord, we pray that you just receive us back. That we might avoid sin, avoid temptation, avoid, avoid the effects of what the enemy has done. And Lord, we look forward to the day when we will be with you for real. Where all of sin and all of death We'll be thrown into the lake of hell and that we'll just be able to be with you and be in perfect peace and perfect love and perfect joy for all times. But until then, Father God, we, we, just, we desire you more than anything. So receive us as we come to you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. He didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you. is powerful. It really, really is. Hey, listen, we are so glad you're with us today. Listen, I know we want you to uh, mill around and talk, but here's the thing. We'd love for you to do that here in just a little bit over at Community, uh, down at the cafe. And so uh, you you can get in conversation here. That's no no problem. But uh, if you need some help maybe to get that direction, we've got uh, fried chicken. There's uh, potato salad, sweet teas, all those types of things down that way. We'd love for all of us just to go down there and just enjoy that time together. So if you could stick around with us, we'd love for you to be a part of that. Should be a lot of fun. Don't forget this Wednesday, right back here, VBS. So all of us will be kids, okay, on that day. We're going to have a lot of fun. We'll encourage our kids that are here, but also, too, I'm kind of looking forward to jumping in. And if you've got an old VBS shirt, Okay, from days gone by, try to find your oldest one and bring, and when I say oldest one, I don't mean the most ratty one, okay? I mean the one that actually is, in history, history the oldest one, okay? Jay thinks he's got a Crocodile Dock one, and that's back there, so, but I think you can maybe even beat that, so if you've got one of those VBS shirts, bring them, wear them, we're going to have a good time. If you have multiple VBS shirts, let me encourage you to do this. Just wear all of them, okay? So just wear all of those things. Should be a lot of fun uh, for all that. Hey, listen, um, we want to invite you 
to invite other people, right? So come and see. We've still got some uh, little uh, business cards out on the connections counter. Make sure that you take some of those with you because all this month we want you to be inviting people to come and see uh, everything here in MC3. And particularly next week, okay? Particularly next week. Don't miss next week, okay? Don't miss next Sunday. Do you know why? Can't tell you. You just have to be here for that, okay? Just be here for all of that. Don't forget, too, if you're coming Wednesday, uh, make sure you go to the connections counter and tell, uh, tell the folks over there uh, uh, how many people you're, you got coming so that we'll have Chick-fil-A's for everybody on that day. Let me pray for us as we close out today. Father God, we give you thanks and we give you praise and we give you glory. Lord, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy, Lord God. Lord, I pray that you keep us faithful that you keep us alert, Father God. Lord, that we would be repentant when we, when we sin. And Lord, that you would, you would have, bring someone to come alongside of us, an accountability partner, someone who can point out the spiritual pitfalls and the spiritual landmines that are ahead, Father God, someone who will walk with us as we simply walk with you. Father, bless us here in a little bit as we take the opportunity to meet together and eat together uh, and enjoy each other's fellowship at the cafe. Bless us in all of that. It's in Jesus' powerful name that we pray. And all God's people said, amen. amen.